Hey guys, welcome to Book Review 142. Today I am going to be reviewing Sean and David's Long Drive <clears throat> by Sean Condon. Okay, this is a book about Australia, um, specifically about a road trip through Australia. And it's really kind of a punk look or a, a kind of a low budget, uh, uh, cynical, um, almost I'd say curmudgeonly look. Uh, while driving through Australia. Now it's not necessarily, it's, it's, it's critical in that it's tongue in cheek. It's not really sort of a, a truly uh, expose of Australia. Rather it kind of complains about the little uh, ins and outs of um, various smaller parts of the culture and, and occasionally you know talks about some larger issues but for the most part it's just Sean being curmudgeonly um, and uh, just kind of wanting to um, be where he's not instead of being where he is and kind of uh, taking pot shots at all the various various things that go along the way. Now there's two ways that a book like this can go. It can either be, become very mundane um, and, uh, and tedious and how boring it is, or it can do what this book does, uh, what Sean does, and use that curmudgeonly nature uh, to really... Uh, take kind of a funny and hilarious look at Australia, at all the kind of, uh, you know, <laughs> stupid things that goes on from uh, uh, what we were calling the United States um, party or uh, business in the front, party in the back, mullets that are uh, popular in Adelaide that seem to be the hairstyle of choice, at least in the mid-90s when this book was written, um, to various sad kind of tourists uh, sites. Uh, the one that I specifically remember is there was one in uh, North Queens, Queensland, not North Queensland, uh, Northern Territories, called uh, yeah, Mataranka, Mataranka. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, that's kind of a more positive person would maybe um, see it as a hot springs area where people can come and relax. Of course, all David saw was a bunch of, you know, 40 to 65-year-old, um, middle-aged, uh, puffy, working stiffs uh, that um, went to this place in the middle of nowhere, uh, and it was really quite boring, and there were bats in everywhere. He described a very funny scene where they used uh, guns to scare the bats and then used helicopter blades to fly over where the bats were to essentially kill all the bats. Uh, the bats being a uh, pest uh, overpopulated in this area. But that's just one example. Um, you know, he looks at Port Augusta. I'm just looking at the map here. He looks at Port Augusta, which it's a shithole. There's nothing there. Um, he talks about, uh, oh, one thing, a common theme throughout the book is the, uh, how much he hates, uh, even riding in a car. He doesn't drive the whole trip because uh, he has a phobia of uh, driving specifically on highways. Um, whereas, uh, so David, David does the whole driving, but even in the passenger seat, he's talking about how these road trains, which are quite large, larger than even in the United States, road trains being the equivalent of semi-trucks, uh, coming, you know, like this in opposite directions on, uh, you know, highway roads, and uh, although it never happens, and I think it's fairly unlikely to happen, he still is mortified by just traveling around the country, kind of an oddity for somebody that wants to take a road trip. Uh, I think secretly he likes a lot of the uh, various uh, uh, sites around the country, uh, but just, uh, uh, you know, they say that um, a the more cynical you were, the more romantic you once were. And uh, that's very true for Sean. Um, let's see, what else is there? Uh, I guess I kind of talked a little bit about uh, Adelaide. Uh, he talks to some of the guest houses he stayed on the way. He started in Melbourne to Adelaide. Uh, Port Ferry, seeing uh, London Bridge and the Twelve Apostles, which uh, he gave appropriate cynicism to. Uh, goes through Adelaide, Port Augusta, up to Cooper, uh, petty, which although still kind of rough around the edges, um, is not the romantically rough uh, kind of Wild West saloon brawl type place that uh, uh, 
uh, it was often made out to be uh, in travel literature. I think they play that up for effect. Um, he later goes over to Uluru, where uh, he cynically talks about all the uh, uh, very low-end to very high-end ways that you can go over the rock. He has a specific way of describing it, but I can't remember. But he essentially talks about how you can walk around the rock, guided tour around the rock, motorcycle around the rock. You can uh, motorcycle plus dinner around the rock. Uh, and then, like, he go, starts going to the high-end options, um, like uh, helicoptering over the rock or taking a hot air balloon. Probably the most... See, that's something that would be really cool and I think kind of uh, romantic or just sort of um, sweep, uh, sweeping uh, in how cool it is. But he, of course, says, uh, those fuckers, which is probably right considering how much money they pay for it. Um, one thing that I thought interesting about uh, Uluru... Uh, also known as Ayers Rock that he described was uh, up at this time period they were allowing people to climb to the top of the rock which although starting to be viewed as um, kind of a faux pas was still allowed now in uh, nowadays uh, that has been barred you're no longer allowed to uh, climb up to the top of Uluru it being a sacred site among the aborigines I think really for the better um, you know the better person in me says that is the correct path of course, you know, the Edmund Hillary in me, or I don't know, Edmund Hillary's a good guy, but uh, once says, oh, he should have, yeah, I still want to go up there, you know, I still want to, uh, I still want to be the adventurer, the explorer, but say la vie, no longer possible. Uh, Alice Springs, um, kind of an oasis of culture in uh, the wide open outback. Of course, I say an oasis of culture that's relative. Um, you know, it's sort of like uh, there's a lot more human garbage. <laughs> I'm starting to sound like Sean in this review. There's a lot more human garbage there, but if you can pick through the piles of human garbage, you can also kind of uh, find a few upmarket things, which uh, he enjoyed after, you know, Cooper Pebby or just the general kind of uh, gruff nature of uh, Roadhouse Outbacks where... Uh, you better believe you're not getting anything more than uh, the cheapest, you know, uh, $3 bottle of wine at any of these roadhouses. What you're going to get is you're going to get uh, a bunch of, uh, what do they call those? Uh, essentially, the red, redneck Australians, um, specific word I can't remember, but uh, who are going to drink a lot of beer, look at you strange, and if you look strange back, they're going to come and there's going to be a bar fight. It's just the way that it is. And of course, that's not in Sean's nature. Sean being very cynical, but also kind of a bit of a pushover uh, in what he's afraid of and what he's willing to get himself into. Um, they go up north to uh, Darwin. They see uh, Maturaka, Mataranaka. So I can't pronounce it. I already mentioned that. That was the place with the bats. Um, one of the cooler stories he has is when he goes to uh, Man, Man Ning. Rida, Manning Rida, um, which is uh, in the Kakadu, I believe, uh, National Park, um, is huge for uranium mining, uh, and he goes and sees some of the uh, sites there, I believe that's maybe, uh, oh no, he does the crocodile tour somewhere else, um, so they go and they see some sites there, but what's really cool is that's when he goes to this island that's off in the, um, uh, what do they call that sea? Uh, essentially the straits, the, I think it might be the Torrey Straits, um, between uh, Australia and uh, Indonesia, much closer to Australia. Uh, but he says that uh, on this boat, he decides to be left on an island by himself while David and some of the other people they're with go on this boat to another island out of sight, you know, a decent distance away where you can't see them on the horizon. Uh, and anyway, they don't come back within the allotted time frame that they're saying, so which, which was like a couple hours. And of course, uh, Sean starts freaking out, at which point they do eventually come back. And, uh, and what's, what was really kind of funny about it was uh, Sean kind of said, I can see the headlines in the story, or the headlines in the newspaper uh, the next day. Man survives on island hour later than what he thought he had to, which is... <laughs> Pretty much uh, crystallizes uh, the guy's view. Um, he goes on the long trip from three ways all the way across to Townsville, 
lot of nothing there. The main site along the way is Mount Isa, which uh, he described as really cool because um, uh, there's a lot of like lights that are with Mount Isa. So it's sort of like uh, uh, almost like a, like a light show uh, in the middle of the night in this town that's really not too big uh, population-wise. It's the largest city in the world in terms of square acreage, though that's a pretty loose definition of what a town is. Um, but he sees, the, you know, the big thing they're known for is this big mining site, and they see it, and it's uh, a really cool, like, a light show. Uh, and that was the main thing I took away from that night. So there were a couple other things we saw there, but... Uh, uh, okay, so on to Townsville, on to the far north. Cairns, Mission Beach, Port Douglas, Cape Trip, Cape Trib. Um, really what I got from this section was the verdant nature of Australia, of this part of Australia, which is something you don't normally say about Australia. Australia mostly being dry or at best kind of mixed between green and, uh, you know, like Mediterranean type climate. But this area really is tropical. It's, um, you know, there's a lot of sugarcane grown there. There's a lot of bananas grown there. Um, he kind of talks about uh, Cairns, which he thought was kind of one of the stranger uh, town incarnations in that this area, this larger area that has like uh, beautiful tropical beaches all the way uh, from the tip of Cape, Cape York, really all the, all the way south in Queensland. Uh, they decide to put this town right on a river estuary where there are giant mud flats. Uh, between, and I've been there. They do have giant mudflats between the town and uh, the ocean, uh, which, you know, I think it was probably for some other reason. Cairns was really founded as a mining town, so you can't really say it was just for tourism. But nowadays, it is mostly a base for tourism. The people have to leave the town in order to really see the beaches. Uh, that being said, he kind of talked about some of the uh, sprawling nature of Cairns. It was kind of a, one of those towns that is lush and kind of, uh, rambling, uh, uh, not really as, you know, kind of planned, if you will, as um, some of its southern peers. But unlike uh, southern peers or other parts of the world where a rambling town is seen as um, really kind of an eyesore or ugly, I think of like Houston, Texas, Cairns, <laughs> uh, um, uh, uh, I believe them pronounce that correctly, Cairns uh, is really romantic in that how much it's rambling and ramshackle and all that stuff because it's among all these uh, forested areas and things like that. Uh, it goes up to Port uh, Douglas, goes and sees the reef, um, enjoys it, wishes that he could have seen more of it, yada yada yada. Uh, finally, he winds up in Cape Trib. Cape Trib, he kind of talks about how once you get up to this part of the um, uh, the York Peninsula, you're really out of civilization again. Most of the Queensland coast is pretty civilized. It's kind of a, I'm not talking all of Queensland, I'm talking around the coastal areas. It has a population density similar to, you know, I don't know, Mississippi or something like that. I have no idea. But there's towns, you know, are fairly common. Once you get up to this area, Cape Tribul Tribulation is really an oasis in a pretty uninhabited uh, Cape York area. Well, why is this important? He talks about the overpricing of beers. He talks about, he acts very cynically. He talks about how people up there are really, uh, uh, you know, have lead in their head, you know, stuff like that. Goes back south. Um, Townsville, military town. Uh, I think he sees like some museums there or something. Uh, McKay, I'm kind of rambling on here because this thing is rambling on. I think I'm only got the 15th, 14th minute or so. Okay, so uh, McKay, uh, Noosa Heads, where he goes, uh, gets his proper surf on the first time that they've surfed the whole uh, trip. Um, sees Brisbane, which he says uh, has modern, what does he say about Brisbane that's really funny? They only are briefly there, but um, they have modern architecture and modern buildings, but it's kind of offset by the fact that all of the ads and billboards are from five seasons ago. So it's sort of this weird combination of um, a city looking towards the future and a city that uh, uh, kind of is stuck in its backwards ways, which is always sort of the reputation of Brisbane. You know, them being very kind of, the mo Queensland being the most conservative state. Um, Queensland being the state that uh, uh, 
maybe has the least amount of culture in terms of, you know, like the Sydney Opera. There is culture there, but like the Sydney Opera House, things like that. Uh, I'm kind of going off book here, but uh, uh, but at the same time, um, a lot of sort of the, they call it Briz Vegas because a lot of the modern architecture, um, a lot of kind of the parks, a lot of the things like that that aren't necessarily intellectual but lead to a higher quality of life, if you will, um, are, are there. Uh, so that's kind of what he says uh, briefly about uh, Brisbane, but where he really goes is Surfer's Paradise, which is great, which is great and ugly and garish and wonderful at the same time. Um, John's a little bit more cynical about it. He talks about, um, you know, it's essentially uh, the Miami Beach of Australia, but unlike Miami Beach, um, unless you include Brisbane, which is fairly close. There's really not like a city attached to Surfer's Paradise, even though people live there. It's, there's like 600,000 people in the town. Um, but it's really sort of a town of uh, kind of like, you know, certain towns in California where it's very transient. It's very much meant for uh, uh, built on the, the buck now. And what's the buck now? It's tourism. It's that there's this huge stretch of beach with all these uh, high rises that have uh, almost universally outdoor patios on them where you can look out on the high rise, uh, you know, like all the rooms have that. You can look out on the high rise over the ocean and then you can go and, um, uh, you know, drink it at kind of skeezy clubs and uh, eat cheap food and shop at cheap, you know, like uh, outlet, not outlet malls, but kind of like, uh, you know, just kind of open market type areas. Uh, yeah, and so I think the way Sean described it best was uh, Surfer's Paradise is really the ex-rugby player who has nothing better to do with his life's uh, epicenter, mecca, if you will. You know, he describes kind of guys that are, you know, brutish or whatever, and are probably pretty nice guys, but just don't have a whole lot going on up there. Uh, that really, they fit, uh, they fit kind of the go out and uh, have a big one, big night out kind of uh, mentality. Um, later goes on to Byron Bay, smoke some weed at Nimbin. That's pretty much par for the course. Um, Byron Bay, I actually liked. I've been there. It's pretty nice. Uh, it's one of the kind of, it's a good kind of counter to Surfer's Paradise and how chill it is, uh, even though it's almost like, um, like, not just chill, but, like, low-key. Like, there's not a lot of development there. It's a smallish-type town. Uh, but uh, it they almost crystallize it in that they try to prevent growth uh, in order to crystallize this, this secret, even though it's an open secret and everybody knows about it. Um, Cross Harbor hits Sydney. Sydney, he talks about as, uh, in a lot of ways, better than Melbourne. Um, but... Uh, uh, kind of people that over, what did he say? People that overdress and over talk was the way that he described uh, uh, Sydney. Uh, moves on to Canberra. Uh, basically, um, basically Canberra is if you took like the very center of Washington, D.C., like the mall area in the capital and removed all 8.75 million people or 8.5 million people that make up the rest of the D.C. metro area uh, and just have these very manicured lawns, um, these very sort of, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, lakes there, a lot of um, uh, hedges that are, you know, trimmed very precisely and neatly. And uh, it's almost a town written so uh, it's aesthetically enjoyable, but you fall asleep in. <laughs> it's pretty much Canberra. Um, Finally, it goes on to the Barnsdale uh, Festival, where they have like a tractor pull, and it's your classic kind of country festival, uh, which is cool, but it's fairly similar. It's a, you know, there are country pies and three-legged ra race competitions, fairly standard to your uh, country town festival in the United States. Winds up uh, back in Melbourne, and that's the book. He really doesn't cover Mel uh, Melbourne all that much, just because I guess he's from Melbourne. Uh, but that's where they end up, so... Guys, this is book review 142. I've gone a little long, but uh, check it out. All right, bye.